I am about to reveal this technique. This is how you can increase your show ratio, make sure that people stay and actually are there for your appointments, by, and how we increase our, our show ratio by 27%. And you can use this technique right now to be able to increase your show ratio, to be able to close more deals. And I want you to go ahead and watch right now. You're an insurance agent that is currently struggling to book appointments. You're either right now not hitting your appointment goals of, you know, 50 or 30 appointments, 15 or 30 appointments per week. And right now you want to see how, how you can go ahead and increase appointments on your schedule, convert more of your leads into booked appointments. And this is the video for you. And if you stick around to the end of the video, at the end of the video, I'm going to re reveal a secret technique, a strategy that you can be able to use to maintain a solid show ratio because here's the thing is if you book 30 appointments and nobody show up then did you really accomplish anything no all you did was you wasted your time so i'm going to show you how you can get people to stick around when you show up for the appointment and actually remember that you're coming so i want you to stick around to the end of the video so we're going to talk about how you can go ahead and make calls and book more appointments okay so an appointment setting the name of the game is contact okay what does that mean that means that if you do not get somebody on the phone and you are not going to be able to book an appointment. And if you're not able to book an appointment, then you're not really setting appointments, right? So the name of the game is contact, right? Half of the battle is basically getting them on the phone. The moment you're able to get them on the phone, what happens next is completely up to you. It's based off of your skill and your preparation. So once you're able to get them on the phone, then I'm going to go ahead and cover what you need to do after you've gotten them on the phone. But the first thing first is you need to be able to get them on the phone if we can go ahead and start closing deals, okay? So first, let's go ahead and diagnose your leads. Diagnose your leads because guess what? If the name of the game is contact and you have crappy leads or you have old leads or you have leads that you bought for 50 cents or 30 cents, then that's probably the first part where you're going wrong is you're trying to work with old data because after a while, it becomes just data. It's no different from cold calling because what you're generally doing is cold calling because if I filled out a form two, three years ago, and you call me about it right now, am I saying you're not going to close the deal? No, you are going to close the deal, but it's just going to be a lot harder to be able to get people on the phone. i give an example. When I initially started in the insurance industry, I bought age final expense mailers. And what I did was I just kind of put them in and I just manually called them, called them. And I believe I spent three bucks on those and I was able to close about like four deals, uh, uh, four deals off of those uh, leads. I think I bought maybe 250 worth which was good money, but honestly, it was very time consuming. Plus, you have to factor in the fact that I was also practicing the skills that I'm going to talk about in this training here. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep watching here. So then again, are your leads hard to get a hold of? If so, either change the lead vendor or just obviously um, get more exclusive leads, right? Exclusive leads, you probably are going to be dealing with a lot with mailers. Or if you're dealing with Facebook or internet generated leads, then you have to understand that any lead that's over five to 10 minutes old, it's probably going stale. Okay. What does that mean? That means that you need to be contacting them fast. Now you have to be closing them now. Call them now. The moment they come in, you should be like, you just got a, a notification. You got a new lead. Pick up the phone, ring, 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 call them up and say, Hey, listen, this is so, so, and so, you know, I am calling regarding your request for more uh, information on the insurance policies. And I want to go ahead and get that information out to you. Okay. So you need to be on the phone. You need to be fast. And if you're fast, you can book them now because intent is high. Okay. Or you can also consider generating your own lead. There are various trainings out there on Facebook, as far as uh, on YouTube, as far as how to generate fine expense leads. You generate fine expense leads on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, you can get mailers. There are various, various uh, um, trainings on that. You can go ahead and watch those. Um, there are various courses as well. As well, um, just go ahead and watch those courses as well to be able to learn how to generate your leads. Number two is it is important to have a dedicated time on your calendar just for dials. Okay, a lot of people say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to dial tomorrow, right? I'm going to call my lead tomorrow or, you know, once I get the time, you know, I'll call them or I'll wake up, I'll dial at 11, or whatever it is. Listen, if it's not on your calendar, if it's not on your schedule, you're not going to do it. And the main major mistake most people make is they stop waiting before they start dialing. And if you're waiting to dial, trust me, you've already lost that customer. If you're waiting to dial, you're not going to do it. You're not going to be on the phone. You're not going to be dialing. And it's just going to end up being a drastic huge waste of your time it's also going to be a waste of the time of you know your upline per se if, you, if you're in that space okay so bigger time most importantly it plays as well the reason why i say places i noticed when i was dialing 
Uh, I don't do much of my dialing myself. I'm going to review how I'm able to not dial my leads. Uh, I, I was not able to dial my leads back then, and I was booking, uh, getting about nine appointments on my schedule. So keep watching the video, and I'm going to reveal that secret as well. Listen, there's a lot of techniques and strategies that are going to be covered in this video, so make sure that you're watching the whole thing, okay? If you got to take a break, go take a break. Take a potty break, go take a potty break. Or come back because this is a training that you do not want to miss, okay? So... Well, we've been making a call. So when I was making my calls, what I would do is I would go into, you know, uh, a room or, or we would organize me and other insurance agents where we would start dialing at 8 a.m. in the morning. At 8 in the morning, we would start dialing on the phones and then we would kind of compare and compete and say, hey, listen, how many appointments you got? This guy like, hey, man, I got seven appointments and it's only, you know, 10 in the morning. This guy like, hey, I already got my schedule filled up and it's only 12 in the morning, uh, you know, 12 in the afternoon. I'm like, yo, listen, I'm slow here, man. I got to pick up the phone and dial. Like, you made how many appointments you got? I'm like, shit. I've got 15 appointments and it took me nine hours. Or I've got this much. And they're like, hey, so why are you taking so long to pick appointments? And they're like, okay, what leads are you using? Okay, using this leads? What's your phone system? All that stuff. And just by me being in an environment and a community, I was able to book, you know, have my schedule filled up. Okay. But after a while, I stopped doing that because I needed to run more appointments in the day. So I started using a strategy I'm going to cover in, in, in the training. Stop calling and start calling in the mornings. That's very, very, very important. Start calling in the mornings. And the reason why you want to start calling in the mornings is because most people, um, you want to be first to contact, first to contract. What does that mean? That means that as people are starting your day, you want to be the first thing top of mind. Okay. You want to, you want them talking to you the moment they start your day. You're driving to work. Boom. You're on the phone booking a, a call, booking an appointment, right? So you want to start calling in the mornings. Mornings are very key. Get a hold of people. Contact high. 8 a.m. should be the earliest. Also, just consult with your state laws. Like some people will start dialing. What I was aware was it was at 7 a.m., 6 30. Uh, per a few states, you cannot call that consumer before a specific time of the day. I don't want you guys to get in trouble. That's the reason why I'm like, hey, just make sure that you're paying attention to stuff like that. And you are you're dialing and calling from the uh, approved time of day. Like for instance, you can't dial past 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. in the state of Florida. So, you know, you start at 8 a.m., for instance, you can't, or 9 a.m., or whatever time you start, you can't go past a specific time as well, okay? Because after a while, just like, dude, people are trying to sleep. Like, there's times which I've gotten telemarketing calls at midnight. And I'm like, why are you calling me at midnight, right? Well, he's like, hey, well, because, you know, I feel you sleep. You're, you're going to definitely pick up. So just be within reasonable hours, right? Be very much within reasonable hours. So consult with your state laws. Because some states will penalize you if you call early at certain times, okay? Uh, once you've picked a time and an environment with like-minded individuals like yourself, calling the next thing you need is an auto-dialer, right? What is an auto-dialer? So a lot of people like to do this. When they start dialing, they pick up your phone and they try dialing with your phone. Here's two problems you, you encounter. One is too slow. If I have 100 people to call, I have to enter 100 numbers and it takes about 45 seconds per ring. So 45 seconds per ring, which means... 45 seconds per ring, you multiply by 100, that's roughly about uh, an hour and change, hour and 40, hour and 45 minutes, give or take, um, to call all the leads. Now, if you're doing that manually, you're not going to be as efficient. Yes, is it going to work? Yes, it's going to work, but you're not going to be as efficient. That's one. And two, if you're using your personal number, what happens is the carriers are paying attention to this. Let's say you use T-Mobile or using AT&T. If you are calling and you're calling and people keep hanging up on you or no one's answering your calls and you're making more than 200 calls, your number will get marked as spam. Your personal number will get marked as spam. So the reason why you want to use an auto dialer is one, an auto dialer, auto dialer gives you the ability to make, you know, more than two to three calls. So for what does that mean? That means on my computer right now, as you see me, and basically what would an auto dialer would allow me to do is either call the same person three times in a row or call the same person call 10 people all at the same time, okay? So I can either call the same person multiple times in a row, or I can call multiple people at the same time, and whoever answers first, boom, that's why I get connected with. That's an example of an auto dialer. Um, so I recommend an auto dialer because, and also another benefit of an auto dialer is, let's say, you know, someone, you know, you're not able to get a hold of someone and you want to text them or leave them a voice message. Most auto dialers have a button. You just click it. Once you click it, boom. It sends a uh, uh, recorded voicemail of your voice. And also, if you want to, you can send up a text message as well. Okay? So that's very important. All right? So a few recommendations for auto dialers. I personally recommend um, phone burner. All right? So phone burner gives you that three calls. And you can you can 
the reason why I like I like phone burner is let's say I'm calling multiple area codes, right? Let's say I'm calling an area code that has a five six one number, seven four two number, seven one seven number, eight one three number, eight three zero. What would happen is phone burner, I will purchase all the numbers of those area codes and phone burner would automatically match those numbers to the people I'm calling, right? So they automatically match those people to the numbers I'm calling. And what is the added benefit of that? The added benefit of that is people answer the local number, right? Like if I have a 913 area code and you call me for a, from a 452 area code, I'm like, well, I don't know that number, right? I don't know anybody in that area code. And I just hang up, right? Versus you increase your pickup or your contact ratio as I cover the number one when you have uh, a local number, right? Um, that's it. So check phone burner out. Uh, next is Ryzen CRM. The Ryzen CRM is basically a white label version of high level that I have. This is basically my platform. Um, what it is is basically it's built for insurance agents and we use it mostly for our virtual assistant side of things. I'll cover that in a later video, but what it allows you to do is you can auto dial your leads. You can set up live transfers. So which what that means is, um, let's say you run a Facebook ad. Once the lead is done filling out the form from Facebook, the CRM will automatically call you. And then once it calls you, it will automatically call the lead as well. If you wanted to set that up, um, we can also set it up where you leave a voicemail after you're done, leave a text message and, um, leave voicemail, text message and an email in the event that they don't pick up the phone. Okay. That's another benefit. Uh, the next is Kixi. So Kixi is basically, remember when I said earlier that you can call multiple people once? So what Kixi allows you to do is, but it's a little bit of a pricier plan. I'll say this. They only day work based off of contracts. So that means they require you to pay one year up front. So usually you're looking about a bill of about $1,500 up front. Uh, $1,500, I believe it's up front or every quarter, something like that. I can't remember what it is. But, but Kixi is a little bit of a pricey side and it's more of if you want to build up a call center, so when you have a call center, then I recommend Kixi. But the thing about Kixi is, and the beautiful part about it that I like about it is like, let's say I have a list of 10 names, right? Rather than me calling all 10 people in a row, uh, uh, 10 people, you know, person one, person two, person three, person four. What Kixi allows me the ability to do is, Kixi allows me the ability to, you know, um, call all 10 people all at the same time. And if person four picks up, and that's John, John is who I'm connected with. And then, but the only downside is it will disconnect the call with everybody else. So what that means is if four other people pick up, I wouldn't know, right? That's the downside to that. There's ringing Ninja dial and more. You can go ahead and reach them, reach out, you know, uh, research, um, but those are the ones in which I personally have used. And recommend. So once you have the auto dial figured out, the next thing you need is a calling script. It's very important to have a script, right? So the importance of the script is, Something short is you need a way of call flow, a way in which you can just follow a system, a structure. Is it really necessary? No. Are you going to find sound robotic? Yes. Um, but is it going to help you go through the calls better? Yes. Especially when you're just starting out, I highly recommend this script. Uh, because with your script, you can get the opener right. Like for instance, hey, it's manual calling regarding the insurance request that you just filled out about five minutes ago. You put your date of birth as March 5th, 1960. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. I see here that you put your beneficiary as blue. Is that correct? Yes. All right, perfect. So I'm out there. Uh, I'll be in your area between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. I'll be dropping off this information that you requested. Um, what time between 4 and 6 would you be available for me to just drop it off? It takes about two minutes. All I need is, you know, see you, hand it to you. What time are you going to be available? Um, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be home tomorrow. Okay, perfect. So, um, what time are you going to be available between either today or, uh, tomorrow or the day after? Uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty much available in the mornings. Okay. Mornings, what time? Um, you know, around 11 a.m. Okay. Around 11 a.m. Well, Martha, I don't have 11 a.m. available right now. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm in an appointment from 1030 to 11. So it's going to take me about 20 minutes to get to you. So I'll probably do 1130. Does 1130 work? Um, uh, yeah, but I have some, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. I got you here, Martha, down for 1130. Um, and then Martha, hey, so. That house that I see here on one two three Success Street. Now, is that an apartment or is that a house? Oh, it's a house. Okay, perfect. What color? Anything unique about it? Well, it's a blue house. Okay, perfect. Um, what about uh, dogs? Do you have any dogs? Or security codes? I gotta put it. Okay. No, I don't have any dogs. Or security code. Okay, perfect. Now, Samantha, so um, when I come in, I'm gonna be pulling a white uh, Kia Forte, and I'm pulling a white Kia Forte, and I'll be parking that. Is it okay better if I park in the driveway or just park on the street? Yeah, parking the driver. I perfect. So Martha, can you do me a favor? Can you grab a pen and paper? 
Okay, yeah, 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 I don't have a pen. Okay, you have your phone on you? You have your phone, right? Okay, can you put me a speaker and can you go on your notes, iPhone, and type in here for me? Type in my, my license number, 111111, okay? And I'll be dropping this information off. What time? Um, 11 to, okay, perfect. Awesome, thank you, Martha. All right, Martha, so um, also just a quick note here. I know you put your beneficiaries this. Is he going to be there as well? Yeah, you, yeah, Mark, he's not there usually. At, he he gets back at like one. Okay, Martha. So unfortunately, like I said, I need both of you to be there. So 1130 is not going to work because, so how about we just reschedule here and I'll put you here for 115. Um, you know what? I'll make sure he stays at 1130. Okay, perfect. Good. I got you down for 1130. So Martha, shy of, you know, the world being on fire, you're going to be there, right? Yeah. Now I want you to understand something. The key thing about my script here, and I just, I'm freestyling right now. The key thing about the script here is, I want you to understand this. I spent probably the first 50 seconds of the call identifying and confirming information is correct. And then I'm spending the remainder of the call ensuring to get the details that they remember and know that I'm coming, right? And that's called tying down the appointment. I'm tying down the appointment to ensure that they know I'm coming. There's going to be a technique that I'm, another technique that we use to increase our, our, our shop ratio by 27%. 27%. Okay, that's a huge number. It's 27%. What that means is, well, that's an extra one out of four people that will show up that would have not been there if we didn't use the technique. I'm going to reveal that in a, in a little bit. Okay, but let's keep going. But preferably something short, to the point, no fluff. Then I recommend before you actually start dialing, spend about five hours listening to other people. Five hours. Five hours at a bare minimum listening to somebody else dial. The reason why you want to do five hours is as human beings, you want to understand, you want to reiterate before you iterate, right? You want to learn how other people do it. You want to see a little techniques that they put it in there. And then you can be like, hey, why did you say what color is the house? Why did you say ABC? Why did you say your license number? Why did you do this? Because now you can understand why we say specific things as opposed to just handing a script to you. Think about it this way. The script is the recipe, but you need to have watched somebody else cook before you start cooking. It's like imagine your parents teaching you how to cook and giving you a recipe to cook, but they never actually showed you how to cook, right? It's a completely different mindset, and you're going to mess it up if you just try cooking from the recipe because sometimes there's a few t there's a few seconds you have to wait. There's a few inches of, I don't know, ounces of salt that you have to add. Um, there's specific things that you don't pick up by reading a script that you will pick up by watching and listening to someone else. There's a bunch of YouTube videos you can watch and invent your... your um, um, your company does not offer stuff like uh, live training, okay? So I recommend listening to a minimum five hours of live dials provided by your company or on YouTube. Then also another thing, remember, the key is preparation because poor, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance, okay? If you're prepared properly, because here's the thing, is you're going to take about 10 hours to prepare. You're going to take 10 hours to prepare and you're going to be down and for God knows how long over the rest of your career. That is going to make a huge difference. Start out the game right. Because here's the truth. Here's, I think Usain Bolt said this. He says, the competition is won in practice. The competition is won in practice, right? The game is just there for, you know, just for show. If you don't practice before you get to the game, you won't fail, right? So that's why we're kind of trying to work on the practice side of things here. Write down the most common objections. Spend about minimum 15 minutes every day. Like, hey, I'm not interested. Okay, perfect. You're not interested. So Mark, like I said, I just got to get this information to you. So I can get you off the list and so no one else from our office calls you again. Um, what time between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. are you going to be available? Right. Or they say, um, you know, uh, I already have insurance. That's perfect. Listen, I just got to get this, you this information. Once I have this information in your hands, it's, it doesn't matter what you do to me. I, I personally, I'm just doing my job. Uh, what time between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. are going to be available? Um, well, you know, uh, send it to me in the, ma uh, send it to me in the mail. Perfect. I'm going to have it delivered to you in the mail. But in order for me to do that, I just got to make sure that you're home. What time between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. are you going to be home? Right? Or they say, um, what else is it? What else is it? Take me off the list. Perfect. That is exactly why I'm calling. The goal right now is to take off the list. But in order for me to do that, there's just a stipulation that says I have to present this information to you. It takes 45 seconds. All I got to do is see you, say it there, cross your name off the list, and you never get a call from my office ever again. Now, what time between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. are you going to be available? All right? 
It doesn't matter what objection it is. Just study how to uh, handle objections and be smooth and fast. Right. Um, that's pretty much it there. So practice that. So then for the secret technique that I promised you, right? This is a secret technique. I am about to reveal this technique. This is how you can increase your show ratio. Make sure that people stay and actually are there for your appointments by and how we increase our, our show ratio by 27%. And you can use this technique right now to be able to increase your show ratio, to be able to close more deals. And I want you to go ahead and watch right now. Why I'm about to reveal this to you right now. And this technique is called the takeaway. Okay, what is the takeaway? The takeaway is it comes from the action of making your prospect uncomfortable. Here's the thing. People do not like to be given something and then it taken away. That's like a, uh, and people will do more to avoid losing things, right? Because they don't want to, it's like a, think about it as a, a, a hoarded mentality, right? How is this, how are you going to apply this in your script? Towards the end of your script, when they've confirmed and you've tied down the appointment, you just say, hey, listen, Martha. Um, so are you going to be, are you sure for sure going to be there at 1130 or would you like me to put you for another time? Hey, Martha. So just want to let you know, uh, you know, ahead of time, you know, I've got about 14 appointments I got to see that day. So I just want to make sure are you going to be there at 1130 or would you like to schedule for a better time that you're sure you're going to be there? Right. I am taking away the appointment. The goal is take away the appointment. And then they're going to like, no, no, I'll be there. Because here's the thing is, it's an element of one, they don't want to lose it. And two, it's a power play showing that your time is important. When you're busy and your time is important, people value it more. The goal is you want to increase the value of the appointment to your customer. That's the reason why you do the takeaway. This, this is a system that we use right now over in our business over text. We text our customers like, hey, Mark, I'm going to be, you know, we have an appointment at 830. Is 830 still going to work for you? Or would you like to reschedule? Okay, and I can tell you this, our show ratio, not just 27% in insurance, our show ratio now is roughly about, if we book about, you know, we're roughly about 100 and so appointments, about roughly about 85 to 88. So that's roughly about a, what, a, a, what, a 12 to 13% no show ratio. 85 to 88 people will show up for a phone or Zoom conversation, not in person. So imagine if this was in person. Okay, that's the that's the power of the takeaways. Like, hey, the way it works is, hey, Mark. So, does that time still work for you, or would you like to reschedule for a much more suitable, better time that you know you'll be there one hundred percent? Now, I know it sounds very you're like, well, they didn't tell me they wanted to reschedule. It doesn't matter if they told you. The goal here is stick to the script. There's a reason why you have to understand. Psychology has to be used here. All right, so that's the takeaway. So. Thanks for watching. Now, if you say, if you need an appointment set up, you're like, hey, Emmanuel, it's too much. I don't have the time to spend learning. I don't really want to pay too much attention to, you know, you know, my tonality and having the right tonality on my script and sounding not too excited and just sounding very monotone. And then I don't want to be matching and mirroring and like, hey, this sound sad. Like, hey, and you're like, hey, Marcus Emmanuel. But like, hey, who's Emmanuel? And I'm like, hey, Mark, you know, it's Emmanuel. I'm just calling regarding that and, um, that application that you filled out here for more information. You don't want to sound like that. You don't want to be robotic. You want to just be focused on closing deals. That's all you want to do. And I want you to go ahead and go to www. Go to check the link in the description to hire a virtual assistant or go to www.riznresults.com forward slash learn more. It's a short nine questionnaire survey. Fill that out so we know your business and book a call on the next page. Once you book a call on the next page, you go ahead and speak to one of our staff members. Once you do, they'll go ahead and analyze your business, and I will place an appointment setter on your business. And here's the best part. If your appointment setter does not perform, you don't owe me a dime. If your appointment setter does not perform, you cancel and say, hey, Emmanuel, I need 100% of my money back. I give you money back 100%. Okay? So that's pretty much it. So just go ahead and check that out, um, and you can hire a train appointment setter today. Thanks a lot for watching. Do me a favor and subscribe and like the channel. And go click the link in the description to hire virtual assistant today. And hopefully this video helped you increase and solidify your appointment setting skills. For that, I say pretty much.